What is up YouTube? I hope you're having a very lovely day. So of course, if you're new around here, welcome to my channel. My name is Ben and on this channel, we talk all about self-publishing. So if that's going to be interesting to you, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Of course, if you are an existing subscriber, then welcome back to this channel. It's really good to see you guys again. In today's video, I'm really, really excited to be bringing you a course on how to use ChatGPT to make more money publishing. Of course, ChatGPT is this AI language model that came out in November 2022. And since, and since its release, it's been an absolute game changer for pretty much every single industry and particularly publishing it can help you save so much time, make you a lot more productive. And at the end of the day, gives you the potential to make a lot more money with your books. And so in today's video, we're going to be talking about every single way we can use ChatGPT to ultimately make more money selling our books on Amazon KDP. Of course, this video touches on how ChatGPT can be used to optimize the process of making and uploading books onto Amazon. So if this is the first time you are doing it, if this is your first book that you are publishing, I highly recommend you watch my tutorial first. This is also on my YouTube channel and it's also linked somewhere in this video. So if you wanna go and watch that, it will tell you how to upload your first book onto Amazon. And once you have that knowledge, then this video will be a lot more helpful for you. So I do recommend you watch this video first if this is the first time you are publishing. But if you are familiar with this process, then this video is perfect. And so having said that, let's dive straight into this video. So we'll first just briefly touch on what ChatGPT is for those that don't know. ChatGPT is an AI language model. And of course, the easiest way to get there is just to do a Google search for ChatGPT. So if we go on Google Chrome, for example, search in Google ChatGPT, it will bring you to a login page. Of course, you will need to make an account first, but once you've made that account, it should bring you to a page that looks like this. Uh, so if I just move my face up here, we can see the whole interface for ChatGPT. We've got, a, we've got a chat box at the bottom where we can pretty much input anything we want to. We've got all our chats here on the side. ChatGPT does save all our chats. And at the bottom down here, we can see some options. Of course, ChatGPT is completely free to use. And there is the option to upgrade to ChatGPT Plus, but that isn't necessary to use ChatGPT. So of course, the first thing I would say if you are new to it is just experiment around with ChatGPT. Pretty much just get a feel for what ChatGPT is like. You can ask it any single question. So for example, we're gonna ask it what the quickest way to becoming a millionaire is. And as we ask it that, it gives us a well-structured response to that question. It basically says that one of the ways is starting your own business. It gives a little bit of context as to why it suggested that as well. And another one, invest in stocks, real estate investing, inherit some wealth, or even win the lottery. So it gives us a nice list of different ways to become a millionaire. Of course, ChatGPT can pretty much do anything. We can even ask it to code a game of Pong. So let's say can literally ask code pong in HTML and look at what ChatGPT does. So just like that, ChatGPT was able to create a whole load of code for us for a game of Pong. If we copy and paste this code into our own HTML, we can literally play Pong through our very own website. The possibilities with ChatGPT are endless and of course, and of course, as self-publishers, we can really harness the power of ChatGPT as well, which brings us onto our next topic. How can ChatGPT help us make more money? So there's two major ways that, that have helped people make more money with publishing via ChatGPT. And that first way is it massively increases the productivity and saves us time. Basically, think about how long it would have taken you to make a book before ChatGPT came out. Any book that you've already self-published, Think about how long that takes. So for example, a quiz book took you four hours, for example. If you use ChatGPT, this can literally slash the amount of time that it would take you to make that same book, come up with all the metadata for your book, such as the title, description, keywords, everything, and doing the niche research. This could cut that time massively. Literally, I found that it cuts around 50 to 75% of the amount of time it would have taken to make the same book before ChatGPT came out. So it really does massively increase your productivity. Of course, if you assign your time money as well. So for example, if you're trying to, if you're trying to be worth at least $100 for eight hours worth of work through self-publishing, then ChatGPT can make you a lot more valuable. So that's one of the ways ChatGPT can help out self publishers. Another way is that it lowers the barrier of entry. So this one I really, really like because it allows self-publishers to make books that weren't possible before ChatGPT. So for example, someone doing low content 
wouldn't have the resources to make a non-fiction book. But with ChatGPT, that is now all possible since ChatGPT does most of the heavy lifting for you. All of a sudden, it really does open doors for self-publishers. Of course, another way it lowers the barrier of entry is through that language barrier as well. So non-native English speakers would have been behind native English speakers when it comes to making English non-fiction books but with ChatGPT it kind of levels up playing field a little bit more so this particularly for non-native English speakers is definitely a tool that you want to be using. Alright so before we start using ChatGPT to help us with self-publishing we need to understand how ChatGPT works for the best results and that means asking it the right questions. So number one is have a goal in mind when you're using ChatGPT. So of course when you come to use ChatGPT what do you want to get from it? So so for example in my case I want to get a good YouTube title out of ChatGPT. So as long as you have that goal in mind it's going to be clear what you want from ChatGPT. Now the second point is be specific and provide as much context as possible. So this goes back to having a goal in mind. Of course, you have a goal in mind and ChatGPT cannot read your mind. So the only way, so the only way ChatGPT can give you the best results is if you are a specific and provide as much context behind what your goal is as possible. So in my case, for example, I want to create a nice YouTube title for this video that's going to reach as many as you viewers as possible. So if we go back onto ChatGPT and let's just open a new chat. So let's ask ChatGPT to create us a YouTube title for this video. So we've asked it, create a YouTube title for a video explaining how ChatGPT can help self-publishers. And so we've got a decent YouTube title here. Of course, as you can see, we've got something that we could literally just copy and paste into our YouTube title when we do publish this video. Of course, it's not completely what I had in my mind. And it goes back to the point of being as specific as possible with what you want and having a clear goal. So, of course, in this video, I wanted to convey to you guys that ChatGPT can help you save time and make money. So, so to be more specific, let's ask ChatGPT to create a title, but emphasizing that it can help us save time and make money. So, as you can see, We've asked it, create a catchy YouTube title emphasizing how ChatGPT can help self-publishers save time and make money. And the response is boost your self-publishing game with ChatGPT, the AI assistant that saves you time and makes you money. So this is a little bit more what I had in mind. Of course, what we can also do as well, if you don't like something that ChatGPT gives you, we can press the regenerate response down here and it will give us a completely different output. And another way to do that as well is just re-asking that question. Uh, but instead of saying create a catchy YouTube title, we can say create five catchy YouTube titles. And so now ChatGPT has given us five YouTube titles to choose from. So it really, again, just goes to show if you ask, you get. So be as specific and give as much context as possible. Of course, I'll be giving you some self-publishing related examples in the next part of this video. But lastly, what we also want to do to get the best results from ChatGPT is to understand ChatGPT's capabilities and limitations. So ChatGPT can remember the conversation that you had with it. So if we go back to this example and I just ask it to create a YouTube description without stating what the title of the video, it will use what it's previously talked about here earlier in the conversation to create an answer. As you can see, are you a self-publisher struggling to balance the demands of writing, editing and marketing your books? It's actually very, very clever what it can do of course of course ChatGPT has some limitations that you do need to know about so the first one is that it only can recall events up to 2021 so if you ask ChatGPT about something recent that has happened it won't know how to respond because it doesn't know of that event so for example if you ask it about the Russia Ukraine war in February 2022 it won't know how to respond to that the other thing as well is that ChatGPT is rate limited so so what that means is that you can only ask it so many questions in a certain time period and this typically tends to be between 150 to 200 prompts in a one hour period in my experience of course if you ask it more than that in a one hour period then it just times you out for another hour you just can't use it for one hour after it times you out. Another limitation that ChatGPT does have is that the servers are often very, very busy. So it can sometimes be slower than normal in generating its responses. And sometimes it might not even let you go into the ChatGPT interface because the servers are too crowded. Of course, of course, a solution to that is to get the ChatGPT Plus where they say that there's always uptime on the servers. But if you're using the free ChatGPT version, just be aware that sometimes it may not work because there's too many people on there already. The final thing that 
you do need to bear in mind as well is that it's not 100% factual. Sometimes ChatGPT can get it wrong. A very, very good example of this, if you just give it some random maths question, for example, so 5325 times 3535, five, five. let me just copy that. So we can see ChatGPT says that the product of it is 18.8 .8 million there. But if we go into Google and ask it the same question, have a look at this. We can see that Google has given us a different number. It looks similar. It starts off with 188, just like ChatGPT did. But we can see the next two numbers, 2, 3 there, do not match with what ChatGPT has given us, 3, 6. So you just have to be careful when using ChatGPT because although it's normally quite factual, it's not always 100% correct on stuff, particularly when it comes to numbers. So just bear that in mind if you're using ChatGPT to write factual stuff. So now we understand how to use ChatGPT for the best results. It's time to move on to the juicy part of this video, how it can help us save time and make more money as self-publishers. So of course, the first way we're gonna talk about how ChatGPT can be used within your publishing business is to brainstorm niches with ChatGPT. So up until the release of ChatGPT, just think about how you would find niches here on Amazon. You would probably just go on Amazon or you'd have some sort of software to help you look for the right niches to publish on Amazon. But now we have another tool, our AI bot ChatGPT. We can literally ask ChatGPT to find us book niches. So for example, and just to give you a general idea, we can just ask ChatGPT to give us five low competition niches to publish in. So let's give that a shot. So the result is five low competition niches that ChatGPT has given us. And at the moment we can see that we've got urban gardening, vintage fashion, mindfulness for children, sustainable living and traveling with pets. And of course, these are actually pretty specific stuff. It's not like saying a book about investing or a book about history, for example. If we, got, if we just copy and paste the first term into Amazon, for example, urban gardening and just search it up in books in amazon.com, watch. So we can see that there's over 10,000 results for urban gardening uh, in books, but the top books are doing pretty, pretty well. 21,000 for the top book there. The next one down that is sponsored 51,000 and it's priced at $14.99. And we can see the list continues to go on with quite a few books doing pretty well near the top. But let's say that but urban gardening may be too broad of a niche still. So what we can do is go back onto ChatGPT copy this question here at the top. And what we can do is ask it specifically, give us five low competition sub niches within urban gardening to publish a nonfiction book in. So basically what we are doing is we are niching down the niches. Of course, we've got urban and gardening as a niche, but we've seen on Amazon that there are too many, that there are too many results for the term urban gardening. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. So ChatGPT has literally given us five sub niches within urban gardening, each sounding very, very specific. So for example, we've got vertical gardening as our first suggestion here. A sub niche within urban gardening is vertical gardening. You could write a book on how to create beautiful gardens in small spaces using walls or other vertical surfaces to grow plants. And of course, I have been in a shared office and I have seen loads of these plants that look like they have been stuck onto the wall to make it have that green landscape. So this definitely could be onto something. We've got another one here, edible landscaping, indoor gardening, community gardening, and sustainable gardening. So five super specific niches here. Let's just give vertical gardening a shot into Amazon and let's see if it really is a lot more niche down. So holy smokes, we're looking at vertical gardening now and we've got 1000 results for that search term, which is a lot better than urban gardening. But if we look at the top book with vertical gardening in it, it's $23.99, it's 336 pages in it. And of course, if we look at the rank, it's 41,000. So it's doing just as good as the urban gardening books, but with a lot less competition. So this niche was only made possible because ChatGPT gave it to us. And of course we can do the same for the other niches that ChatGPT has given us to see which one is the best to publish in. So it's so hopefully you can see how powerful ChatGPT is at helping us find some niches. I'll give you another example as well. Let's see. Let's say we're a low content publisher and we want to put five great low content niches to publish in. We can just reword this question that we got before and just replace nonfiction with low content. And let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. So again, we run into the similar problem as we did last time. We did get 
fairly broad niches to begin with. So what we can do is take coloring books for adults just as an example. And let's let's just copy and paste the question from before. Give us five low content sub niches. So we've got a question now. Give us five low competition sub niches within coloring books for adults to publish a low content book. And then let's see what ChatGPT gives us. As you can see, ChatGPT has given us five sub niches within coloring books for adults, and they do look pretty good off the face of it. Botanical illustrations, geometric patterns, inspirational quotes, which I know do really, really well, animal designs, and abstract art. Of course, some of them could be niched down further, but generally we've got five good niches that we can go straight back onto Amazon and see how much competition there is. Of course, we can just vet the ones that we want to do and the best niche will be the one that we take forward. So we so we can see ChatGPT as a way to take out the inefficiencies of finding niches. We can get straight to the point with ChatGPT in two minutes and find some really great niches without having to scour Amazon for hours or without having to use complex or expensive software. And as always, we can regenerate the response if we're not happy with the responses that we are given. We can always niche it down further. So we could even just take geometric patterns, coloring book for adults, for example, and ask for five sub niches of geometric patterns and just niche it down until we find a good until we find that golden niche with low competition in it. So it really is a powerful tool that we have at our hands here. So now we've used ChatGPT to find that golden niche. What we want to do is research that niche and we can do this again with ChatGPT. So I'm gonna be taking vertical gardening as our example. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna open a new chat and we're gonna ask ChatGPT to give us some relevant keywords related to vertical gardening. So what we can do is just ask ChatGPT. And so the question here is give us 20 low competition keywords related to vertical gardening. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. So we have 20 really decent keywords here for vertical gardening, of course. And of course, since we asked it for low competition keywords, ChatGPT has given us 20 long tail keywords. So keywords that are going to have inherently less competition because they have quite a lot of words in it. Of course, vertical gardening, for example, would have a lot more competition than vertical garden trellis ideas. So ChatGPT really is intuitive with when it comes to finding keywords. Of course, we can literally ask it for any amount of keywords. I've gone up to 50 personally, and it's literally generated me a list of 50 low competition keywords. Of course, we can check them as well using software. If we are a bit unsure, but ChatGPT, as you can see, is a quick way to get some really Really good keywords. Another thing that I like to do when it comes to doing this niche research is asking ChatGPT what the typical target market is for these vertical gardening books. So what we're going to do is ask ChatGPT. So to conduct our niche research, we're going to ask ChatGPT what kind of people typically do vertical gardening. And the response will give us some idea as to the type of people that might want to buy our book. So ChatGPT gives us a list of eight groups of people that might be interested in vertical gardening. Of course, some of them might be obvious, like gardeners who just want to try a new form of gardening, but some ideas may be ones you haven't thought about before. People interested in sustainability or reducing the carbon footprint, for example. So that could be something we could incorporate in the book. People with physical limitations or disabilities who find traditioning, traditional gardening difficult. So this is a very clever one, something that I personally wouldn't have thought of if I was doing niche research. But of course, with the power of ChatGPT, we now know this. Anyone looking to add some creativity to their gardening endeavors. And so now what we can do with the target market for our book is ask ChatGPT for 20 keywords related to the target market of the book. If you recall earlier, we had 20 good keywords relating to vertical gardening itself, but none of them targeted the target market for our upcoming book. So what we want to do is just copy this question up here, give us 20 low competition keywords related to the target market for vertical gardening. So the question here was give us 20 low competition keywords related to the target market for vertical gardening as the prompt. And what we get is keywords that relate to the target market of the vertical gardening book. So of course, before we had vertical gardening related keywords, but now we have it related to the target market and we get 20 fresh low competition keywords that we can use for the metadata of our book, of course. So now we've got an idea of related keywords and the target market for our book. We can create an awesome title for our vertical garden and book. So what we want to do is simply ask ChatGPT 
for a compelling title for a vertical gardening book. Of course, feel free to copy the prompts that I use for ChatGPT from this video. So, so the question is, write a compelling title for a vertical gardening non-fiction book. So let's see what ChatGPT says. So ChatGPT's response is Vertical Harvest, the ultimate guide to growing a thriving garden in small spaces. So what I really like about ChatGPT is that it only uses each word once. It doesn't repeat the word garden, for example, or the word vertical. So it really makes use of just one single keyword in the title there. Of course, it's a pretty compelling title, Vertical Harvest, comma, the ultimate guide to growing a thriving garden in small spaces. But of course, this is just the title and with every book, we want to be using the subtitles in there. And of course, within the subtitle, we want to make it readable, but at the same time, we want to get some other keywords that haven't yet been in the title that are gonna be very important for vertical gardening. So what we're gonna ask ChatGPT is to create a subtitle based on the target market as well, because of course, we want the target market to be buying our books. So we can just ask ChatGPT, so our question to ChatGPT will be, write a compelling subtitle for our book titled Vertical Harvest, the ultimate guide to growing a thriving garden in small spaces, including keywords related to the target market of our book. So let's see what ChatGPT will respond. And our response for a subtitle is maximize your space, minimize your effort, a complete handbook for urban gardeners, small space homesteaders, and sustainable living enthusiasts. And that is absolutely nuts it's literally again given us a lot of good keywords in our subtitle and made sure not to repeat any of the keywords that are in our title of course if it were me i think i might get rid of this maximize your space and minimize your effort bit from the subtitle since we've got the title here already and so we don't want it to be too long when we combine the title and subtitle but all in all ChatGPT gives us some very some very good titles and subtitles to use for our books so we've got a great niche, we've got a great title and subtitle for our book. And now it's time to move on to creating the content inside of the book. And this is probably the craziest part of ChatGPT and how much time it can save self-publishers. And of course, ChatGPT, as you've seen, if we give it a prompt, it will create anything for us. And that includes the interior of the book. Now, before we move on to this point, of course, we can't just ask ChatGPT, copy what ChatGPT says and put it inside our book. Remember the limitations, it's not always factually correct. So I want to say, we always want to check what ChatGPT gives us and make some corrections, make some modifications to make the book more personal before we publish it. But for the most part, we can use ChatGPT to do most of the heavy lifting for us. So in the case of vertical gardening, our example, we can really begin with a table of contents. Now we can easily see how ChatGPT is able to give us a great table of contents. So what we can do is ask. So our question here for ChatGPT is create a table of contents for a book titled Vertical Harvest, the ultimate guide to growing a thriving garden in small spaces. And the response is, and so believe it or not, ChatGPT has given us a table of contents for our vertical gardening book. You can see that it's pretty inclusive of everything we might want to see in a vertical gardening book. We've got the introduction, why vertical gardening, benefits of vertical gardening, overview of the book, which is a nice way to start that nonfiction book. And we've got six chapters in total, planning your vertical garden, building your vertical garden, preparing your vertical garden, planting your vertical garden, maintaining your vertical garden and creative ideas. And we've got even a conclusion at the end. So ChatGPT has given us a nice table of contents here. Of course, what we can also do is go back onto Amazon, check what the books on Amazon have as their table of contents to make sure that ChatGPT has given us the right kind of information. And once we've verified that, then we can actually start asking ChatGPT to write out all the sub chapters of this. Again, I'm not recommending you just copy and paste from ChatGPT straight into the book and publish it as is. You do have to modify it at least some way, but again, ChatGPT can do most of the heavy lifting for you. So for example, we can literally ask ChatGPT in the introduction phase of this book. So So we've asked ChatGPT, write a chapter on why vertical gardening for the introduction part of our book 
Vertical Harvest, the ultimate guide for growing a thriving garden in small spaces. And of course, we get this chapter, Why Vertical Gardening, just from the table of contents that ChatGPT has created for us. So literally, what resulted was ChatGPT giving us a whole chapter on why vertical gardening for our book. Of course, the thing that I noticed with ChatGPT when it writes it is there is quite a bit of repetition. So what you need to do is read through it and delete any repeated points that ChatGPT makes. Of course, you probably wanna make it a little bit more personal, like I say as well, but generally speaking, you can see that is written all of this in the space of just a couple of seconds and you didn't need to do anything. You just need to know what to ask ChatGPT. So this is absolutely nuts. Of course, we've literally got, of course, we can literally go on to the second point, which is benefits of vertical gardening. So what we can do again, just copy our prompt up here, write a chapter on benefits of vertical gardening for the introduction part of our book, Vertical Harvest. And we just ask ChatGPT the same question. And again, and so again, ChatGPT gives us a whole chapter on the benefits of vertical gardening. So just by reading it, just by skim reading, I can see that it's already repeated some of the points that we've seen in why vertical gardening. And of course, you're gonna have to remove some of these points, but generally speaking, we can really fill out a book. Of course, all this text here would probably represent at least one or two sides in a standard size nonfiction book. So quite quickly, you can see ChatGPT can be made to fill out an entire nonfiction book. And so we can continue going on just throughout the whole table of contents, asking ChatGPT the same thing until we have a fully formed book, which is absolutely nuts. Before ChatGPT came out, imagine how much effort that would have taken an inexperienced writer to make. So really mind blowing stuff here. Of course, another book, and of course, it's not just nonfiction books that we can create with ChatGPT. There's plenty of other types of books. Let's look at another example for a quiz book. So let's say we've got one about American football. We can ask ChatGPT to come up with the questions for our quiz book. So the question is list 10 multiple choice questions for an American football themed quiz book. Let's see what ChatGPT says. And what we get is an effortless 10 multiple choice questions about American football from ChatGPT. Again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these are factually correct when you put them in your book, but you can just keep asking the same question and getting a different response from ChatGPT. Again, if we ask the same question, we're gonna get a set, we're gonna get a set of 10 different answers. And so you guys get the point. I'm going to stop generating, but you can see that the first question here, what is the maximum time allowed for each team to make a play is nowhere to be found in the first set of 10 questions. So what you can just do is, is just keep repeating the same question to chat GPT and you'll get a different set of answers. Of course, you can also modify your prompt to chat GPT. So if this is aimed at children, then you can ask it for list 10 multiple choice questions for an American themed football for an American football themed quiz book for children. And of course, if you want it to be more difficult, you can again, just ask for it from chat GPT. It really is that simple. We're gonna look at one more example as well, and that's gonna be for a word search. So if we're gonna be making a word search, we can literally just again, ask chat GPT for a list of words to put into our word search. And of course, if our word search is American football themed, what we first wanna do is break down American football into subtopics within American football. So let's say list 20 subtopics within American football. And so we asked ChatGPT list 20 subtopics within American football and ChatGPT gave us 20 subtopics. Now what we can do is just grab each one of those subtopics. So say we're gonna start off with history of American football and what and what we're gonna do is ask ChatGPT to list 10 words. So the question is list 10 words associated with the history of American football. We're just gonna take the first one of the subtopics and we're again gonna get a list of 10 words. And so what you see here is 10 words associated with the history of American football. And what we can do with these words is put them through a word search generator. And just like that, we have a fully functioning word search with a list of words generated easily from ChatGPT. And we can just keep on going through this list of subtopics within American football. So the next one will be rules and regulations and just copying and pasting this prompt here to generate those list of words for our word search. So. All in all, I've shown you three different types of books you can easily make with ChatGPT. Again, think how long that would have taken before the ChatGPT era. So, we, so 
So we really are seeing an opportunity that we've never seen before with publishing because of AI and chat GPT. Now, of course, finally, now, finally, for our book, we do want a nice blurb to go on the back cover of our book. We're just going to take vertical gardening once again. And what we're going to do is just ask ChatGPT for a compelling blurb of our vertical gardening book. So I'm just going to scroll up and just copy and paste our title. So the question is, write a compelling blurb for a book titled Vertical Harvest, the ultimate guide to growing and thriving a garden in small spaces. And... And so we get a lovely answer from ChatGPT, which would be a perfect blurb for our non-fiction book. It might need some condensing. We can literally just ask ChatGPT to condense this further. So literally our prompt could just be condense this further. And so ChatGPT has condensed this from a nine line paragraph to a six line paragraph just like that and of course we can literally take this put this on the back of our book edit it a bit if we need to and that is the content of our book sorted of course we can of course we can also ask ChatGPT for other things like a disclaimer at the start of the book so for example for example a disclaimer saying that we are not responsible for any garden mistakes or something that you do uh, so you can literally just prompt ChatGPT for that but all in all that is the content pretty much sorted with ChatGPT for self-publishers. And now we're going to move on to start listing our book onto Amazon. So now we've got the book's content sorted, whatever your book you are making, now we can use ChatGPT to help us list our book on Amazon. So of course, if you've been publishing books onto Amazon, you know that it takes a while to come up with a good description to fill in those keyword boxes. But with ChatGPT, this whole process is so much easier. So to demonstrate, let's head straight onto Tangent Templates, which is our listing helper here. Of course, we already have a title and a subtitle. So what we can do is just grab that from before, so we got our preview looking like this. Of course, we have good use of characters, 72 characters remaining of the maximum 254. So not 100% used, but quite a nice, quite a nice succinct title for our vertical gardening book. Now, next up, we have the description here, which, which is probably my least favorite part. I don't particularly like writing all too much, but with ChatGPT now, the description becomes so much easier. So what we can do again is just copy the title of our book. And we can ask ChatGPT to write a product description for our book. Simple as that. So, so our question for ChatGPT is write an Amazon product description for our book titled Vertical Harvest, the ultimate guide to growing a thriving garden in small spaces. Include a short summary of the book, the features and the benefits of the book for potential customers and a call to action at the end. And so what we get from ChatGPT is a fully formatted product description for our vertical garden and book. Just have a look at this. So we first get a qualifier right at the start. That's what we want in our product description, which is just a question to a potential customer to qualify them. We get a short summary of our book. Of course, we need to be a little bit careful with what we say in our description as well. Of course, we such that the description isn't misleading for our book. Of course, this is just a generic chat GPT response. So we do want to be editing this specifically for our book. For example, we don't want to say expert advice because this is potentially misleading, particularly if you're not an expert in this field. We also get features and benefits and that's bulleted as well. So that's extremely nice. Five bullets for each feature and benefit. And at the end, we do get a summary and that call to action. Don't wait any longer to start growing your own thriving vertical garden. Get vertical, ha vertical harvest today and unlock the full potential of your small space. I do think that's a little bit of an error. They forgot to put the second bit of the title in there. But generally speaking, we get an amazing description that we can literally just take from ChatGPT and put it onto our listing. Let's just see how that might look. And there we go, of course. Of course, on Amazon, you can format things further as well. So for example, you can make certain things bold or certain things italic. Uh, but generally speaking, a very nice product description there, about half of the maximum 4,000 characters used. Again, if you want to put other stuff in there, such as testimonials or anything like that, then you just need to ask ChatGPT for it. So, using a prompt similar to this, but adding the testimonials or whatever you want in your description there. So that's really cool. Of course, we can do that again for our quiz book. We can do that again for a word search, but we can do that for any type of book and we can get a description that looks super professional in a fraction of the time it would have taken me to write out this description. So really, really cool. Of course, 
as we go down we also see the keyword boxes another difficult thing to do in my opinion this always used to take a while because of course you don't want to miss any of the good keywords so so with chat gpt again we can literally just get the keywords that we generated before and put them in there have a look at this so we can literally go to vertical gardening and we can literally just take these keywords from what we generated before or we can just generate some more keywords whatever you guys fancy and we can just put them straight into these keyword boxes of course of course you're gonna to have to sort them out yourself you don't want too many repeating keywords in there ideally you want one of each keyword for all the seven keyword slots here but you can see with ChatGPT, we've already generated some amazing keywords that we can literally just copy and paste straight into these keyword slots of course you might want to edit it just a little bit to make sure all the characters are used up in these keyword slots but generally speaking we get some really really nice ones we can just copy and paste in so I've just copied and pasted some of the keywords that ChatGPT generated and now we have the keyword slots pretty much sorted out. Of course. And now we have the keyword slots done. The final thing to do is come up with a pen name for our vertical gardening book. Of course, if you can't think of one off the top of your head, again, we can just head to ChatGPT and prompt it to give us some pen names. So when we prompt ChatGPT with list five pen names for a book titled Vertical Harvest, this is what we get. We get actual pen names that incorporate some type of nature garden keyword in there, which is pretty cool actually, because having an author name related to the niche you're publishing in can definitely help with SEO. Of course, if you wanted a more business sounding name, we can also adjust the prompt just a little bit. So instead of pen names, let's ask for publishing, publisher names. So now we've asked ChatGPT for five publisher names instead of pen names. We get more business sounding like pen names for our book. Green Fun Press, Harvest House Publishers, Urban Oasis Books, Sky Garden, Sky Garden Publishing and Thriving Spaces Press. Amazing stuff from ChatGPT once again. We just choose whichever we like the most. I do like Green Fun Press, so I'm just going to copy. And I'm just going to take Green Fun Press and put it as our author like this. Green Fun Press. And that is pretty much our listing done. So as a summary, ChatGPT has helped us with the description of our book, the keywords of our book, as we talked about earlier in this video, and finally the pen name for our book. So with this done, our book is literally ready to be uploaded onto Amazon with the correct metadata. And once it's up there, then you just repeat the process of creating books made so much simpler with ChatGPT. You can obviously use ChatGPT to upload your books with a lot less time required than what was available before ChatGPT. And you can see that with the amount of time you save, you can be so much more productive and therefore make more money with your publishing business. So you now know how to use ChatGPT to make your book, brainstorm ideas on what books to write about and list your books on Amazon KDP. I'm gonna be talking about some of the other ways we can use ChatGPT to help us as publishers. So this is gonna be other ChatGPT prompts that may be useful for you. So, so one of the ways ChatGPT can be helpful to you outside of this making the book and uploading them cycle is through email marketing. So if you use your books to create an email list, ChatGPT can easily help you with your email marketing efforts. Of course, if you have a list of people that you send emails to, ChatGPT can very easily write you email copies. So for example, if we go back onto ChatGPT, we can see that we have some email marketing copy here using the Ada framework and this is a prompt that you can easily use. So it says, write an email using the attention, desire, interest, action framework to grab the attention of people struggling to commit to vertical marketing and persuade them to take action. Start with a bold statement to get their attention, present information that piques their interest in vertical gardening, state the benefits of our vertical gardening book to create desire and ask for a purchase of our vertical gardening book. And if we put that in, this is what ChatGPT says. So ChatGPT has given us a whole email marketing copy for us to use to promote our newly published book. And this is using the Ada technique. Just look how well this is formatted out. Of course, if we want to change any of the aspects of this email, we can simply do so. So for example, if we want to change this subject to make it more catchy. So for example, we could use a prompt like this, make the email subject more attention grabbing. And, 
And ChatGPT gives us this, double your garden space with vertical gardening. Get our book now. So you can see it's taken the previous subject, transform your space with vertical gardening to this. So, you know, any aspect of the email that you want changing and you can just literally prompt ChatGPT to do that. Of course, another way we can use ChatGPT outside of making and listing our books onto Amazon is by creating a website. So again, if you're trying to build a brand around the books that you have published on Amazon, you can use ChatGPT to make you a website specifically asking about specifically with the content of your website so for example if your website needs an FAQ page frequently you ask questions we can simply we can simply ask chat GPT to do that so we're asking chat GPT write an FAQ for an online store selling gardening related books and so we get a very generic FAQ for our website just from chat GPT saving you so much time when it does come time to make your own website so at the end, we can see that ChatGPT has given us seven questions and answers there about some generic topics about gardening there, which is pretty cool indeed. As well, ChatGPT can write us a very nice about us page for our website. So again, we can just take the previous prompt and write an, write an about us page for an online store selling gardening related books. Maybe we want to make it lighthearted and funny. We can ask that from ChatGPT as well. So lighthearted and funny. So we've asked for a lighthearted and funny about us page for an online store selling gardening related books. And as you can see, we that's exactly what we got as well. Welcome to our little corner of the internet where the sun is always shining, the flowers are always in bloom and the veggies are always ripe for the picking. Here at our online store, we're passionate all about all things gardening. We believe there's nothing quite as satisfying as digging in the dirt, nurturing a tiny seedling and watching it grow into a beautiful plant of delicious vegetables. So honestly, ChatGPT is unbelievable at this stuff. Of course, we can help we can use ChatGPT to write the content of our website as well. And that brings me on to the next point, which is blogging. So blogging is a good way to bring in traffic to your website and maybe attention to the books that you have published as well. So for example, you can ask ChatGPT to write a blog about vertical gardening. And maybe in that blog, you can put links to the vertical gardening book on Amazon, therefore earning an affiliate commission from your books, as well as the sale of your book as well. So you can literally just go on to ChatGPT. So for example, we can ask ChatGPT, write a blog about free struggles vertical gardeners may encounter. So we do get a lovely blog here from ChatGPT. We get free struggles that vertical gardeners may encounter. Some obscure ones as well. Vertical gardens require more frequent watering than traditional gardens due to the fact that the soil can dry out more quickly. So there's a point that, you know, I didn't know. So, so a blog like this could definitely get quite a lot of eyeballs on it, particularly for the fact that this is a low competition niche. So there's probably not that many other blogs about vertical gardening. And so when people click on it, maybe under each one of the points, you can point visitors to your website, to your vertical gardening book that's available on Amazon. And of course, we can just copy this from ChatGPT, make it our own a little bit with some editing, make sure that it's all factual and correct and put it on our own website. Of course, you probably do need to edit your blog because I have heard that Google can detect AI writing. And if it does detect AI writing, on your website, it does tend to push it down in the search engine. So you do want to check more into that if you're going to be blogging using AI tools. But generally speaking, we can see that we do have a very, very nice template for us to use for our website if we do want to write a blog to go along with our book. So that kind of summarizes the extra prompts that publishers can potentially use for self-publishing their books. And finally, this kind of leads me on to the helpful resources that I want to leave you guys with this video. So some extra resources that you can use alongside ChatGPT that's AI powered that can probably help you in your self-publishing journey. journey. These resources are these two. So the first one is a GitHub repository for ChatGPT prompts for these act as prompts. So I haven't talked about act as prompts, but these are particularly powerful prompts. If we go on the website over here to GitHub, we can see that if we scroll down on that website, we have a bunch of ChatGPT prompts, each one telling ChatGPT to act as an expert in a certain field. So for example, we can ask ChatGPT to act as an English translator and improver. And the prompt that you put into ChatGPT will be this. I want you to act as an English translator, spelling corrector and improver. And this website, so this GitHub repository, I'll, I'll leave this link in the description down below as well. But basically this repository has all these prompts that transform ChatGPT into something else. Basically, 
if we go down to this one here, which is very interesting, act as an advertiser. If we type this in to ChatGPT, we really do get an amazing response. So if we just go on a new chat and we add this prompt in there, this act as an advertiser prompt, and we just edit it a little bit. My first suggestion request is I need to create an advertising campaign for a new. So I've edited it, say I need help on creating an advertising campaign for a new book release on vertical gardening. And if we put this into ChatGPT, look at the response. So after giving ChatGPT this act as prompt, we can see that it transforms ChatGPT into some kind of coach. With this prompt, we can see that it's given us a target audience, key messages and slogans for our vertical gardening book. It's shown us what media channels we can promote our gar vertical gardening book on, some additional activities we can do to advertise our book, and a nice summary at the very end. So basically, this act as prompt has transformed ChatGPT into an advertising coach, so we can ask ChatGPT anything from this point forward and it will respond as an advertising coach. So in a way it's kind of like having a mentor. So this is just one example of the prompts available on here. Act as a storyteller is the next one down. So if you want to create a fiction novel, we can ask ChatGPT to be a storyteller and it can come up with some story ideas for us. Act as a football commentator, stand-up comedian, motivational coach, composer, debater, screenwriter, novelist here as well, a movie critic, relationship coach, it can literally be anything. So for example, if we're writing a relationship book, we can ask ChatGPT to be a relationship coach and then it can present us some interesting ideas, some questions that we can incorporate into our relationship theme book. So it's really, really crazy what is possible. The sky is the limit really when it comes to ChatGPT. Of course, the second helpful resource that I wanted to show you guys as well is Stable Diffusion. So if you ever need images to go along with your book, Stable Diffusion is one I use for AI generated images. Basically what it does is it transforms text into image. So if you need an image on vertical gardening, for example, oftentimes, oftentimes the image that comes out won't quite be correct. But generally speaking, this is a good way to get some copyright free images that pertain to the subject of your book that you're writing. So we can literally type in vertical gardening up here. Um, sometimes there will be a very long queue to wait though. At the moment, you can see I'm 68th in the queue of 90 people, and it's estimating that it will take roughly 61 seconds to generate my image. But when it is done, it will generate us four images here that we can potentially use in our book if they are good enough. So that's one of the ways that we can use AI as well in self-publishing. And while this is generating, I'll just talk about the last one as well. We also have a lot of features here on Canva. So at the moment, this whole slideshow was done on Canva, but Canva itself has adapted very, very well to AI. They've got a text to image feature on the left here. So again, we can ask Canva for vertical gardening and see what they come up with. And also if, and so as you see, Canva has actually generated some really awesome images here for vertical gardening. Let's take this one for example. We can literally take this image here of vertical gardening and put it as the front cover of our book if we think it's good enough. It does look very, very nice. Of course, we want to look at the niche and see what other book covers look like and see if it's appropriate. But generally speaking, these are some actually very nice images for a potential vertical gardening book. And these are generated from AI. They're not found anywhere else. So they're copyright free and you're free to use them knowing that you're the only person that has access to this very image here. So it's really, really crazy. Another feature here on Canva that I wanted to show you while we let Stable Diffusion load is this documents here on Canva. Canva is a free software, it does have a paid edition, but you can try it out for yourself. And basically, if we go on doc here on Canva, you can see that it has a similar function to ChatGPT. There is some, there's this magic write function here. So basically you can add a prompt into this and it would be very, very similar to ChatGPT. Write 10, so I'm asking magic write on Canva, write 10 things that are needed for success in vertical gardening. Let's just see what it comes up with if I type this in. And while that happens there, let's go back to Stable Diffusion. And this is what Stable Diffusion gives us. They look pretty much like photos, but in the same way as Canva, these are AI generated images. There's one of a kind and they are copyright free as well. So you can literally just get an image like this, for example, and put it on the cover of your book. As you can see, the image quality is a little bit grainy. So you will have to take these images with a pinch of salt, particularly if your book's going to be large. But generally speaking, they do look like photos until you zoom in closer to them. So this is actually incredible. This, 
They've given you a selection of four photos that you can potentially use. I do think my laptop's frozen a little bit because it's processing too much, but you can see at the bottom there, there's four different photos you can choose from to use on your book cover. So actually amazing stuff. And finally, going back onto Canva, this is what the 10 things that are needed in success in vertical marketing has given us. A good plan, a sturdy structure, appropriate soil containers. So, you know, it's not just ChatGPT coming up with these AI writing systems. So those are just some of the other helpful resources that might be helpful for you on your publishing journey. But all in all, that's pretty much all I have to say in this video. Uh, I think I've pretty much covered everything. If you do have any questions about anything, feel free to drop a comment down below. If you think I've missed anything in terms of ChatGPT, if you've got any good prompts that you think I missed out in this video, feel free to share them down below. But of course, if you've got anything from this video as well, I really would appreciate you smashing that like button. As you can see behind me, it's completely dark now. And when we started this video, it was literally about midday. So it did take a long time to make. So if you did find this con if you did find this video helpful, I really would appreciate a nice smashing of the like button and a subscribe to this channel. But otherwise, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see all you guys in my next video.